Hey, what's up everybody? This is Scott with Titans to CNC, and I got more for you on the Walter Helitronic Vision 400L from United Grinding. Today, I'm gonna show you how to manufacture on an automated process of the bone pin. Ooh, it's pretty solid. Hopefully, you've never had to experience one of these, but if you've broken a major bone in your body, that bone has to be in place for an extended period of time. This pin is actually driven into a good portion of your bone, and fixed to an external fixture that's gonna hold your bone in place until you heal. Maybe you've experienced that before and you can tell us about it in the comments below, but we gotta make these and uh, we got an automated process with our LR Mate Fanuc robot behind us. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get that all set up, show you guys some of our wheels and show you the process and how we can get this part manufactured. So as we're setting up our robot, we have our three quarter inch pallets here, which we're not using for this particular job, but we have our quarter inch pallets since we're using a quarter inch surgical steel. And we're gonna load these all up so that the robot can put them in the machine for machining and they'll bring them back to this pallet once the process is done. We need to do this in two operations. We're gonna do the driver, which is really similar to your, your typical drill bit. And then uh, our op two is gonna be our screw. So it's got a cutting edge on the, on the tip and it's also got flutes all the way down for your thread. Let's uh, go ahead and run a couple parts. We have various wheels and these are gonna be CBN wheels, our cubic boron nitride. The CBN is a little bit better for materials such as this surgical steel and other stainless steels. With these are various shapes and sizes, as you can see. This one's pretty simple, just round. This one's got like a cup shape to it. Also has a wheel on the back. Depending on how many wheels we need or uh, the geometries that we're trying to get on this tool will depend on how you're gonna pack your wheel. Now I got a couple different variations of coolant. I've got my flex hose and my, my hard pipe. Depending on the application you're trying to achieve, maybe these flex hoses are gonna work well for you, or maybe you need to bend some copper pipes that are gonna be a little bit more rigid and you can control the flow coming out of the tip if you squeeze this. If I got my 1A1 wheel here, I can load this up and then I can load up my manifold and now I can set up my coolant in our machine. We have the Blazo Grind HC10 grinding oil. Something really important with grinding wheels is dressing. Just because I get a wheel brand new from the manufacturer doesn't guarantee that when I load it up on this wheel pack that it's gonna be round. So it's important to dress it to true it. So what we have here is a dressing wheel. This is aluminum oxide. This aluminum oxide wheel is gonna be used to dress this CBN wheel into shape. On our Walter, it actually has programming inside of it so we can dress our wheels in the case we need to. And in our case, we did. If you were using sandpaper on something, it loads up with material. It's not as good as it was when it was brand new. The same things happen with grinding wheels. When you're grinding steels and carbides, sometimes 
they load up with material. And you need a way to refresh the wheel or clean out some of that grit and what we say, reopen the wheel. And we're gonna do that with this aluminum oxide stick. It's called sticking the wheel. So we're gonna turn the wheel on. We're simply gonna take the stick. And stick the wheel. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the nomenclature of the tip of this. Now, right off the bat, you see the thread, right? But the tip, it's not just a tip, it's made up of a couple of different operations, and I wanted to bring those up to you guys. So we've got the gashing, we have a clearance, a secondary clearance, and then a tertiary clearance. Now, the gashing is what's responsible for creating your chip formation, and which is really important for this particular tool because you know, you're drilling in a bone. Now there's gonna be a pilot, but there's obviously some cutting edges on here so that we are you know, making a clean cut because it's going into your bone. You don't want it fracturing or anything or causing any more damage. You just want this drilled in nice and snug so it can hold that frame onto your leg. What you would typically see or what you might perceive as your cutting edge, which is the edge right above the gashing, it's really flat that's what's actually gonna be cutting into your material. That's known as our primary clearance. And right behind that would be our secondary clearance. Now it's important that you have a steep angle on that secondary clearance because as the tool's coming around, you don't want material sticking out too far. It's actually gonna cut or rub on top of your cutting edge or your primary clearance. Now that I got my screw, I gotta make sure it works. There you go, Johnny. Legs fixed. <laughs> it works. Hey guys, so I hope you really enjoyed that whole process with the robot, Op 1 and Op 2. Hope you learned something about some of the different terminologies of various tools. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to program this guy. Now the Walter Software Tool Studio is really easy to use. It's a lot of fun, so I hope you stick around for that. If you guys like what you saw today, go ahead and like and subscribe. Send your comments down below. I love interacting with you guys, it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Stay safe so that you don't need a bone screw in your future. We'll see you guys next time.